I'm George Finney, and I'm here to make you more well aware uh, when it comes to cybersecurity. Uh, so this is the uh, fourth masterclass. Uh, we're uh, not quite yet halfway through the, the nine cybersecurity habits. Um, this week, we're going to focus on vigilance. So the, the first habit, uh, literacy, we learned uh, how to build our, our, our foundation of cybersecurity uh, using fearless learning and tactical literacy to uh, to have a strategy for, for uh, what we need to, to learn when we need to know it. Um, with skepticism, we learned uh, how to not believe everything we read um, and how to apply that uh, in, in our lives um, uh, using you know, the, the, the super cool technique, uh, slow down and frown, uh, which is just a natural free way uh, for you to increase your own uh, uh, vigilance. Uh, I, I call it uh, resting frowny face. Uh, other, other folks might call it uh, uh, something else. Um, uh, this week we're going to talk about vigilance and I think of vigilance as a kind of uh, focused uh, skepticism. Um, so we, we, you know, we, we like to think that we, you know, you know should be uh, vigilant all the time, uh, but that's not actually the way we work. Um, you know, there, there are times when we feel safe uh, when we're less uh, vigilant and there, there, there are times when we don't feel safe and those are the times that we naturally increase our own uh, vigilance, just like we talked about with, with slow down and frown, you can use frowning uh, to help increase your vigilance. Uh, uh, we saw that uh, he here uh, at SNU uh, by, we, we actually increased the, or, or uh, decreased the likelihood that uh, a, a user would, would click on a phishing message. And we also more than doubled the, uh, the, uh, the likelihood that that person was going to report that phishing message. Uh, so, but with vigilance, uh, there, there, there are some main components, um, some basics that, that we need to cover. Um, and the, 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 the first part of that um, is, uh, I, I love this quote by JFK, um, you know, forgive your enemies, uh, but don't forget their names. Um, so th th this is really important. You know, the other weeks we, we, we've kind of given a theme, uh, whether it, you know, with skepticism, it was speaking truth to power, uh, with, with literacy it was fearless learning. Um, this week um, is, is going to be that, uh, that idea of giving uh, you, you, you know, the bad guy a name, right? Personifying them in a way like we do with so many other things. Um, and so uh, the, the, the first story that I'd like to tell, we're gonna rewind the clock uh, back to the, the, the olden days of, of 2014. Um, so in 2014, um, there was a security vulnerability that, that, that came out. Um, there's a process uh, there, the, we call security uh, vulnerabilities CVEs. So we give them all a designation. This, this particular one was uh, CVE uh, 2014-1060. Um, so, you know, a, a researcher, just to give you an idea, a researcher discovers a vulnerability um, and they put in a, a, a CVE uh, to, to, to the community so that uh, everyone will know that, that that's been discovered and people can go uh, start to communicate about it. They can patch it, they can uh, go address it in their areas um, or, or find out whether their, their devices are, are vulnerable. And so in, in this case, uh, uh, CVE 2014-1060 uh, was a, a pretty big deal. Um, it was uh, so big a deal, in fact, that uh, almost 20% of the internet uh, was impacted. Um, well, one Forbes columnist uh, uh, said that, that without uh, exaggerating, that this was the most uh, significant security vulnerability that had ever been discovered in the history of the internet. Um, and, and he wasn't exaggerating, right? This is a really big deal. It had to do with uh, being able to break uh, the encryption, the basic encryption that runs all of the websites on the internet. So you know, overnight we could have experienced complete, you know, uh, dissolution of all uh, confidential conversations, right? We couldn't, you know, take uh, uh, credit cards online, for example, if, if, if this, uh, you know, continued. Um, so, you know, typically the, the, what, what happens when uh, a, a security vulnerability is, is found, um, the, the, the finder gets to, to, to name it. Uh, in, in this case, there were two uh, people that independently found it. Uh, one was a researcher at Google, um, who just put in the paperwork a couple of days before uh, a Finnish researcher um, who worked for a company. I love the name of their company. It's called uh, 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 Codenomicon. Um, they were acquired later. Um, uh, and we'll talk about that in a second. But uh, the, the, the Finnish researcher uh, submitted his paperwork a couple of days later 
Um, but the Google person hadn't actually named the vulnerability. So just like you know, with discovering uh, a new comment or a new star, um, uh, your, your security researchers get, get first dibs at, at naming it. Um, so the, the Finnish researcher named the, the, the vulnerability Heartbleed. Um, it had to do with the heartbeat mechanism that, that was leaking uh, uh, data in, in, in the uh, standard for SSL encryption. And so, uh, so he, he named it Heartbleed, uh, but this is the first example. Um, and again, it was a really big deal, this particular vulnerability, but this is the first example um, that I, I ever saw of a, a software vulnerability uh, getting a logo. So you're seeing on the screen right now, the logo for Heartbleed. Um, and so why was the logo important? As, as I mentioned, um, you know, we, we give it this cool name, Heartbleed, uh, it's memorable. We give it a logo um, uh, for a reason. And that, so if 20% if of, of the, 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 the main internet websites that you would use on a given day uh, all had this vulnerability, it, it was catastrophic um, if we didn't get it addressed. And so, you know, this logo, the name, you know, you could think of it as kind of a, a, a marketing campaign, if you will. Um, but really what it did, it was, it, it was to give a face uh, to a faceless uh, enemy, if you will. Um, and I, I think we made a lot more progress uh, patching uh, this, uh, this vulnerability because of this picture, this logo, um, and the name that went along with it. Um, it's not that necessarily we, we intended to scare people. Um, it was that we, we, we needed to get the word out. And uh, oh my gosh, um, you know, a lot of people patched it right away. Normally, you know, patches like this, you know, it, it's a struggle. To, to get people to buy in because there's all this regression testing that we have to do for software vulnerabilities before we go patch. Because we, we don't want to break users' computers. We don't want to break uh, the, the systems that run it, especially the servers that are running the backbone of the internet. Um, so the, 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 the result, they, the, this vulnerability got a lot more attention. Pa patches got pushed out uh, a little faster. Um, so the, the, the idea is um, you know, we, we want to assign that name to a faceless enemy, and, and, and how do we do that? Um, so um, this, this, this idea of, of, of fear, uh, right, we, we, you know, if we want uh, fear to, to be a tool in our toolkit, it can't be the only tool, um, as I mentioned with the slow down and frown technique, um, you, know, you want to use your, your frowny face uh, to increase your, your own skepticism, your own vigilance. Um, but it, it's interesting to think about um, what fear looks like from a, from a neurological perspective. Um, and so you, you'll see these two pictures of, of two sets of eyes uh, in the slide. And what you're seeing is the, the, the above pictures, um, uh, they were just shown to, to people for less than two hundredths of a second. Um, so that, that's not long enough for you to consciously even see um, the, the, the picture on the screen, um, but, it was long enough uh, for the, the, the subjects that, that were shown these images uh, to have a reaction. Uh, that's because your brain is already reacting to the things uh, that it's seeing in the world, even if your conscious mind isn't aware of it. Um, and so what happened when, when you saw the, the, the picture of the eyes on the left, as I mentioned last week, right, even just seeing a picture of a, of a person frowning would give you the same effect uh, uh, as you frowning in, a, in the slowdown and frown effect. Um, you know, just seeing someone's, the whites of their eyes with no other context um, actually elevated um, the heart rate of, uh, in a measurable way, of, of the subjects in, in the test. Um, not even for long enough that they could see uh, what it was that was being shown to them. Um, and, and so, uh, you know, you, you've got this picture of, of these research subjects uh, kind of being experimented on and in, in, in in, a, in an MRI machine, um, but this is important because we need to be able to control our fear, right? And again, it's one tool in the toolkit. Um, we have to put it away when, when, when we don't need it. Um, so, so how do we accomplish that particular uh, feat of imagination? Um, so let's rewind back to the first masterclass. Uh, so th this is the, uh, the, the, the picture we showed you of uh, the triune brain. Um, so the, the amygdala uh, that, that I just mentioned um, is actually part of the limbic system. So this is the system that controls your, your emotions. 
Um, so the neocortex is really what, what does all of your, your cool critical thinking problem solving. Um, your reptilian brain um, is, is really what controls habits uh, that, that, are, that are much lower down in, in your awareness. Um, the, the limbic system is interesting. Um, again, it's where the emotions uh, reside. It's also where decisions are made. Um, and, you know, some psychologists, you know, in, in terms of bandwidth, um, you know, they think that the limbic system can only process four, maybe six, maybe eight emotions, but, but definitely in that range, right? It does those things almost instantly, um, but it, it, it's, it, it's so much faster um, and, and kind of more reliable <laughs> in some ways than, than the neocortex um, to, to in, in terms of predictability on, on what it's going to do. Um, so we, we need to be aware of this challenge, um, but this is a challenge for cybersecurity uh, because we know uh, that attackers, our attackers will commonly use this super fast fear network, right? Again, you, you know, just two hundredths of a, uh, of a second, um, that's how fast your uh, your fear system uh, will operate. Um, so, how, how do we how do we uh, overcome uh, that challenge? You know, say, for example, with phishing, uh, where you know our our, our ability to reason uh, is is being overridden by the the, the, the scariness of whatever we're being uh, shown. Um, so, uh, I, I think this is interesting because. Um, uh, in 2013, a team of neuroscientists at the University of Pittsburgh and Carnegie Mellon collaborating together, um, looking at people um, in MRIs machines, um, they, they, they asked this group of folks uh, to meditate. Um, and so what they actually found is they did before and after studies. And as these, this group of people uh, began to meditate, um, on a regular basis. It was really only a couple of times a week. It was really only a few minutes at, at a time. Um, you know, again, I, I remember, uh, you know, back when I was learning karate, when I was in, in elementary school, um, they would actually sit us down and meditate. And we meditated for, you know, 20 minutes or something before we could, you know, go do our karate moves. Um, and as, as, a, as a kid in elementary school, it was really hard to sit there for a long time. Um, but, you know, again, for, for the purpose of the study, they were not, you know, going crazy. It was really just beginners, folks who had never meditated before. And what they found is just by meditating, just by meditating, the amygdala itself, the, the, the thing inside your brain um, that we think of as static, it actually started to shrink. The size of it um, became, became smaller. And at the same time, the brain's prefrontal cortex became thicker. Um, so again, you know, you're, the prefrontal cortex is associated with, you know, the higher level brain functions like awareness, concentration, decision making. Um, so the, the connectivity itself between the amygdala and the rest of the brain also changed in the subject. So that while the connections with the amygdala got weaker, connections with inside the brain with attention and concentration got stronger. Um, so in other words, all of the areas of the brain that play a role in vigilance got stronger after regular meditation. Uh, so this is incredibly important, right? You know, I mean, I, I don't think you probably came into a, 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 a master class on cybersecurity uh, to think that I would recommend that, that you, you look at meditation, um, but it is something that, that can make a, a big difference. Um, and, and just so you know, I, you know, I, I actually did this last year. Um, I, you know, I, I didn't want to write a book about this without doing some meditation myself. Um, and I found out that you can actually buy a consumer grade EEG device. It's, you know, it's called a Muse. It's like a little headband you put on. Um, and it actually will give you biofeedback in terms of sounds um, to, to know how well you're doing. So that was the other challenge with meditation for me personally is, you know, I could sit there and, you know, you know, in, in the full lotus position and, and, and say, oh, um, but I didn't know whether I was doing the right things or not. Um, and so having a tool to do that um, I, I think would, would only uh, accelerate my growth, um, but you didn't necessarily even need to go down to that level of, of, of focus on meditation to, 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 to experience a benefit. Um, and so, okay, well, what do you do now uh, that you've got all this extra uh, composure and concentration and focus? Uh, well, uh, okay, well, uh, well, well, let's talk about where's Waldo for a second. Um, so I, I don't know if, if you like Where's Waldo or not, and I, I talk about this quite a bit in the book, um, but the, 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 the challenge is, uh, you know, oh my gosh, you know, 
how do I find Waldo? For some people, um, Waldo just jumps off the page at them and they see it instantly. For me, that's not the case. Um, and actually there is a, uh, a, a computer programmer a few years ago um, that came up with uh, what, what he calls the optimal search path algorithm uh, for, uh, for Waldo. Um, and what I found interesting as I did research for this, right, there's not just Waldo in these pictures. There's actually like an evil Waldo. Waldo has a girlfriend that you can find, you know, so if you found Waldo in all these pictures, that's cool. But did you find the wizard? I'm not kidding. There's actually a wizard in every uh, Waldo picture. Um, and, and so, okay, well, if you want to find Waldo, the natural place uh, uh, to, to, to find Waldo is in all the places that we've known where Waldo has shown up before. And th that's the same thing that we do for security threats or vulnerabilities, right? We, we know what to keep a lookout, a, a lookout for because we heard from a, you know, one of our other friends that they got a, a fake phone call pretending to be from the FBI. Uh, they know that they got this fake scam, you know, Apple had called them and said they had malware on their computer and they walked through and then actually know the person they talked to uh, put malware on their system and now is then charging them to take it off. Uh, so that, that's really, I, I think, the best illustration I can come up with for, for vigilance. It, that's, why, that's why I use Waldo, because we, we can kind of, you know, we can't always spot a red flag, just like we can't always spot Waldo. Um, we can't be aware of everything in the Waldo picture at the same time. Um, so what do we do? Well, we need to cheat. And uh, this computer programmer uh, has, has, has come up with the, the, the Where's Waldo optimal search path. Um, so it's fascinating. Um, but uh, the, the computer programmer figured out that you need to really do two things. You need to, 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 to scan for uh, where Waldo has been in the past. Um, and then you need to, 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 to filter everything else out and look, you know, just in a smaller area where, where you can spot, uh, 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 you know, irregularities, if you will. Um, so th there are different paths that, that he took. Um, that, so, you know, to, to spot all of the, the places where they've been, um, you, you can do the colored path and be super accurate. Um, or you can just do a, a quick scan in, in, in the black. And so that's what you would do. Um, and when you reach the top uh, uh, right portion uh, of, of the, the, the picture, um, let me see if I can highlight that for you here. Uh, so Waldo is actually hiding right up here, uh, uh, right above the samurai, I guess, uh, with, the, with the lion. Um, Evil Waldo was down here right at the beginning, uh, right next to the start here uh, uh, words. Um, and, and, and that's that's a great way to to to, to cheat. You you can uh, you know uh, you can find Waldo much more efficiently. But the same process holds uh, for spotting any kind of red flag. Um, you you have to filter and, and scan your environment for those things. So it, it, it's the same when you're uh, you're driving uh, and and you know, you're you're doing your defensive driving and uh, you know you're, you're watching out for other people on the road, acting uh, you know driving erratically or, or too fast or too slow. Um, it's the same for, for cybersecurity. Um, and, and, and so, okay, you know, we, we, we know how to be vigilant. Um, uh, when do we be, uh, be vigilant? So th this is an interesting dilemma. Um, so uh, the Irish Republican Army uh, actually said this quote, uh, you only have to be lucky. We only have to be lucky once, but you will have to be lucky always. Um, I tell this story in the book uh, of, about uh, the, the IRA's attempted assassination of the British Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher uh, back in the 1980s. Um, and, and so, you know, I, I, I've said a couple of times, you know, cybersecurity has this uh, motto, uh, people are the weakest link. Um, and I, I've said, I, I think people are the only link in security, uh, but the bad guys have a motto as well, and this is it. Um, you know, you only have to be, we, you only, we only have to be lucky once, you have to be lucky always. Um, so uh, to, to borrow another quote, uh, the Roman philosopher Seneca uh, said, luck is what happens when preparation meets opportunity. Uh, so I think being vigilant uh, means both being prepared uh, and creating opportunities for ourselves to spot bad activity. Um, but I, I think first we have to take a step back um, and, and, and realize um, uh, the marshmallow effect. Um, so, uh, so this is one of the most famous uh, studies uh, that, that really has come out in, in the last, I think, 
you know, 40 years. Um, and, and it really, you know, it boiled down to, you know, getting a bunch of kids in a room um, and, and, and seeing if they would eat marshmallows when the, when the adults left the room. Um, and, and the experiment was pretty simple. They, they gave them, you know, one marshmallow and they said when they come back, if they didn't eat it, they'd get another marshmallow. Um, and, and really, they, they figured out that this is, uh, you know, this, this is a good way of measuring uh, how, you know, how successful kids will be because they've got that self-control. Um, but there's, there, there, there's also a, a different interesting element to this. And that, that, that is a, that willpower works like a muscle. Um, it, it can, you know, so, you know, it can both get stronger as well as weaker. Uh, so subsequent studies on the marshmallow effect, um, you know, have, have done things like they, they had the, the experimenter yell at the people who were, were you know, going to get the, the, the marshmallows or the cookies or whatever. Um, and, you know, in, in those kind of abusive environments, uh, right, it's, it, it, you know, people's willpower, uh, people's ability to wait until the, 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 per, the mean person came back into the room before they ate their cookie or whatever, um, that went down. And I think that that's that that that's reflective of real life as as well. So you know we're 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 stressed out sometimes. We're in the middle of a pandemic, um, and oh my gosh, this 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 is a big challenge for us. Um, I, I I can't be vigilant all the time. Um, so so while we'll you know we, so this this is a great insight that that you know habits I think just like willpower work like muscles, right? When we're tired, we don't want to we don't want to go for a run, right? We we don't want to do those things because we, we need to, to, to do some self-care. Um, but so, so that, that's helpful to know in, in the context of the ninth habits. I think also uh, that's a really great insight um, in terms of, of, of getting, in, in getting stronger, right? Improving our, our, our security muscles. Um, if they work like a muscle, that means that we can get stronger. Uh, if it works like a muscle, that means we can measure uh, how much we're improving. Um, just like you, you've got a personal trainer um, you can start to measure, uh, you know, how how much faster you're getting, how much stronger you're getting. Um, I think you can do those things, same things with the security habits. Um, you 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 can also uh, measure how long it takes you to recover, right? That's another great metric um, that I think we ought to be uh, uh, taking into account. So uh, so let me apply this back to a, a concrete example for us. Um, so I, I mentioned last month I finished doing our biggest fisher competition uh, here at SMU. And, and you know, we've been doing simulated fishing campaigns for the last six years. Um, and, and, and this is the way that I had pictured those campaigns. So ultimately we got to a place where, you know, 97% of the, the, the people in our community don't click on phishing messages. Just a handful do. Um, and, and, you know, this is about as good as we've, we've got, been able to get, we've kind of plateaued at 3% at clicking. But, you know, so this is a really oversimplified version of that story. There's a lot more going on uh, behind the scenes than, than clicking and not clicking. Um, and and I, I was able to get some more insights into that um, uh, by, uh, you know, kind of diving deeper with, with this gamified uh, uh, Biggest Fisher game. Um, and, and what I realized, you know, again, people, I, ideally, you know, we, we train our users to, to say, well, you should always be expecting to, to get a fish. Uh, and, and well, maybe they're busy, maybe they're doing other things that, uh, okay, well, for the purposes of Biggest Fisher, you were gonna get, you know, an email, a phishing email a day, every day for 30 days. And if, if, if you found enough and didn't click, um, you'd win a free vacation day. So, so I created a situation where they, they should have been expecting to, to get uh, phishing messages. And granted, as, because I knew they were expecting them, I, I, I made the difficulty of, the, of spotting the phishing messages a little harder. Um, but the, the, the really interesting thing is that two thirds of the group, generally speaking on any, for any given phishing message, uh, would just completely ignore it, right? They, they, they didn't click on it. They didn't report it to, to, to me, even though reporting it could have gotten them a, a, a free vacation day. Um, that to me is really important. Um, and so if, if, if you're coming at it from, from the perspective of, of the attacker, um, you're the bad guy. You, you, you don't want to send a phishing message that's just going to be ignored. Um, and, and that's going to vary widely between, uh, you know, different organizations. So, you know, uh, you know some messages I, I receive every day, I I'm totally desensitized to them. I, I'll never open them. If, if you copy that kind of, of, of campaign, most likely it's going to fall into the ignore button. 
bucket. Um, so as, as, as a fisher, you, you don't want to be ignored, uh, but you also don't want to set off any alarm bells. Uh, and I, I found in, in my program, uh, again, because of the incentives we had had, had in place for the game, about 30% of them uh, did report the messages uh, for any given message. So, you know, again, because we're talking about phishing, I, I'm really calling this part in the middle of the 3% that, that people click um, as, as I'm, you know, it's, it's a, it's a, underwater metaphor. So I, I've got to use something like, I, I'm, I'm calling it the fishy trench. Uh, so it's, you know, like the Marianas trench. And anyway, I, I don't think it's going to catch on, but let me know in the comments if, if you like calling it the fishy trench. Um, and, and so you, you'll, you'll notice that, that I actually have two colors there uh, inside the fishy trench. So some of the people that click on phishing messages, click on them and they're, they're compromised, but they never know it. Um, and then other people that have clicked uh, will still report it. So, you know, red and blue uh, make purple. So I, I've kind of colored uh, uh, folks who, who've been, uh, who've clicked, but then still reported it as a different color, just to denote that there's a different action going on there that, that isn't, you know, insignificant, right? We know that, uh, you know, most uh, uh, phishing messages, if you're going to click, you, you've clicked on it within the first hour. Uh, so if we can increase that, that percentage of people who are are reporting it, not just decrease the number of people who are clicking, um, then we still have made a difference because we can get messaging out uh, to other people who are targeted. Or, you know, if it made it past our, 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 our spam or phishing filters, we can do something about it. Um, and I, I think that's a big part of, of, of vigilance. Vigilance isn't just, you know, seeing something, uh, it's saying something, right? You, you need to do both see something and say something to help make the community stronger. Um, and so, uh, you know, we, we talked about, uh, you know, uh, uh, meditating. That's really interesting. Um, this uh, lumberjack kind of looking guy um, is, is, you know, potentially meditating. Um, but also we found that uh, journaling uh, can, can really make a big difference. Um, again, you know, when, when you're thinking about being vigilant for something, um, you, you want to reinforce that habit of seeing something and say something, right? So at the end of the day, you know, you, you can reward yourself uh, uh, by when, when you uh, see something, say something, uh, but, but uh, journaling after the fact uh, reinforces that because you're, you're, you're in effect reliving the moment, right? You're, you're essentially doubling the amount of time you've spent on that experience. Um, you're, you're, you're drawing, you know, conclusions. You're, 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 you're thinking about what it is the next time um, that you're going to be vigilant for, and that's a, that also has has been shown uh, to create additional uh, uh, vigilance outcomes to 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 increase your vigilance. Um, so as as I say all, every time, um, security is in your DNA. I, I'm I'm super serious about this. Um, you know, I, I think we can harness that 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 internal superhero warrior inside of us uh, to make a difference. Um, so think about your recipes for vigilance, uh, prompt behavior reward. Um, you know, we, we, maybe there are some behaviors that you think, okay, I need to, I need to be more vigilant when it comes to my kids and what they're, uh, what they're doing online or, or the text messages uh, that, that, that they're sending, for example. Um, you know, what's the prompt that's going to get you to, to, to go uh, review those messages? Well, you know, don't let it be the prompt that like something bad happened um, and now I've got to go through everything. Uh, you know, think about something more regular that, that you can review. Um, you know, think so that's the behavior of the reward. You know, make it a family oriented thing if, it, if, if it's if it's something with your kids. Uh, maybe it's, you know, for you, it's spending time with your kids. But I think connecting those rewards back to the behaviors and, and, and kind of having them be cohesive around the, the constellation of vigilance habits, I, I think will have the most difference. Um, so, so for me this week, my sample recipes uh, are to use the, 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 frown, the frowning technique while reading, um, but also for, for vigilance, um, you know, let's, uh, you know, I've thought about adding, um, you know, if, if I'm gonna start using a password manager, um, you know, every time I come across, you know, the prompt, you know, to, to log in, um, I'm gonna just go make sure that I've added that to my, uh, my, my password vault. Um, and then of course, I'll, I'll give myself a, a Reese's peanut butter cup. Um, so, you know, you think about whenever you get a new internet service provider, um, you know, uh, maybe your reward could be watching your favorite video on, on YouTube. Um, 
but I, I think again, think that there's a reason that I keep saying security is in your DNA because I, I think in order to, to to master the nine cybersecurity habits, you have to think of yourself um, as the kind of person that makes the world more secure, right? You have to think of yourself, whether you're an, an accountant or a, a lawyer or a salesperson, you have to think of yourself as the kind of person that makes the world more secure. That's your value. Um, and that will, I think, have a transformative effect uh, when, when you start looking at implementing the, the nine cybersecurity habits uh, into your life. Um, so, you know, next week we will be talking about secrecy. Uh, so, you know, once, once you've mastered vigilance and skepticism, you need to know what it is that you're protecting. And I see secrecy as the dividing line between that which, you know, sh should be public and that which should be private. Um, and, you know, keeping an eye out for that, right, you know, vigilance naturally leads into uh, thinking about uh, how, to, how to protect your own private information. Um, so again, if you're not following me already, follow me on Twitter. I'm at WellAwareSecure. Uh, uh, please do send your, uh, uh, your, your recipes. That we're, we're, it, we're in a tight race for who will win uh, the uh, 2020 coffee mug. Uh, so get those in, and I thank you so much for joining me. me. Uh, I understand we, uh, we we had a little bit of a, a blip with the week off, uh, changing times to, to five instead of noon. It's going to be noon from here on out. Um, if you if you can join us live, that works great. Um, if not, uh, you know, keep watching the the, the videos online afterwards. Um, and yeah, send send us your uh, uh, your your tips. Uh, send us your recipes. We want to hear from you on on how you're, you're bringing those nine habits back into your life. Thank you so much for joining me and we will see you next week.